Hey everyone, it's John, and today what we're going to do is some more netconf automation. So let's get into it. So in the previous video, we just looked at doing netconf automation. Now, why am I making another video about the same subject? Well, quite simply, is that this way is a much easier way to configure netconf. So if you recall from the previous video, we had just established a pretty simple workflow to be able to work with netconf. The difference this time though is that ordinarily with netconf you're going to have to work with Jinja 2. This by far, at least in my opinion, was the most laborious part of configuring netconf, having to write in all those conditional statements to build that XML payload. So here's the thing, if you follow the network automation community quite closely, you might have heard of a network automation architect called Dimitri Figal. So I posed this question to him, I asked Dimitri, how are you able to get around writing all these complex Jinja templates for your netconf payloads? And he actually told me, pointed me to a script which he had written, which allows you to avoid this entirely. Now this is so cool and it makes netconf so much easier to use, so I want to share it with you. So the place to find the original code which I'm going to be working from is in Dimitri's GitHub in the Nornir apps folder. And if you click on NR app here and then go into utils, all of the code here is what we're going to be using. And if we go back out and go into scripts and we click on netconf configure, this here is the code which I'm going to be working with again, although I've made a slight modification to it. So the modified version which I'm going to be working from is in this folder here on my GitHub. And if you go to this URL, you'll be able to find it. Okay, so the first piece of code which we're going to copy is this one here, test1.py. So for this demonstration, what we're going to do is a copy pasta of this code and let's just create a script called I don't know runbook.py okay now the next piece of code is in this folder here called Dimitri Figo this is clearly not the original name but I was joking with Dimitri that I was going to call it this so let's go into magic sauce and just copy this okay so let's actually change the name of the path then so we'll say mkdir and we'll call this one Dimitri Netconf and we'll cd in here and we'll just call this, I don't know, uh, no ginger dot pie and just paste all this in. Okay, so because we've actually changed the name of the path to Dimitri Netconf and the actual module is now called no ginger, let's amend that within our script. Okay, so back into the run book. So it's no longer from Dimitri Figal import magic sauce. It's going to be Dimitri Netconf import no ginger. And I was actually using the magic sauce here. I can't say that without laughing. So what we're going to have to do is amend this to be no ginger now. Okay, so no ginger. And this is all we need to do from the point of view of the code. What we are going to do then to actually make our change Changes is just simply define the state we want to have on the box within our host variable YAML files. And all this code is going to do is take those host variable files, it's going to load them in, and it's going to convert them into a valid XML payload. So if you remember from the previous video, we always had to amend the tags to say config at the very root, close it off with config. You can see here that we don't actually have to do that, the script automatically does all this for us. Okay, so the workflow in this example is going to be tailored for Cisco iOS XE platforms. And just like before, we're going to be using the native Yang models. So the demonstration is going to be tailored for this. So if you've watched the previous video on netconf, you're going to be able to follow the workflow which I'm going to do just now. What I want to do is to be able to configure OSPF with netconf. So the very first thing which I'm going to do is to get a skeleton template by configuring it first via the CLI. So let's go to this device here, R3. And what we'll just do is router, OSPF, one, router ID, all the threes. And the network we are on is 10.23.0.0. So network 10.23.0.0. It's a slash 24 mask and we'll put this in area zero and we'll also advertise our loopback and we'll put that in area zero too. Okay, great. So we've now got that configured on the box. So the first thing we're going to do is get that information back. So let's follow the same workflow and I'm going to go into my getter script. So all I'm going to do is send a netconf get to forward slash native. This in effect is going to be like issuing a show run. Okay, so python3 get.py. We can see that our OSPF configuration is here and it's actually indented within the router tags. So the way we can just get this section of information is by doing forward slash native and then appending forward slash router. Now we're going to be doing an operation replace and as it transpires, OSPF tags are actually a leaf list object and you can't do an operation replace in a leaf list object in Yang. So we're just going to have to do the replacement at the router level. 
So let's amend our script and just get back the router information. Okay, so forward slash router and let's reissue the script. Okay, so we've successfully pulled back all our router information within which we have our OSPF configuration. Now what we want to do is copy this data and convert it to YAML. So we copy from native down to native and just copy this. Now the website I'm going to recommend you use is this one here, Online YAML Tools. I've used other ones but they actually format it a little bit weirdly when it comes to lists. Using this one we get it the correct way the first time. So let's paste this in and now on the right hand side we have our valid YAML information. So let's copy all this. Okay so what we want to do with this information is use it to create our host variable files. So we're going to go into our host files directory. So cd host files and we're going to call our host variable file after the name of the device. So in this case it's going to be r3.yaml and let's just paste this in. Okay so let's go in and edit this. So now we have this information in valid YAML format. Now this part here isn't actually necessary. You can leave this part exactly where it is. But just for clarity what I would suggest is that you move this namespace up to the top of the file just under the native key. And you'll see the reason for that in a second. Let's just copy this and paste it in. And the thing you really want to make sure of is that this one here has the same indentation as the one below. So now we've got this copy moved to the top of the file to make it a little bit easier to see. Let's just get rid of this one. So we'll go down here and delete. Now you'll notice that we're not going to delete this namespace because this is an OSPF namespace. The reason why we deleted the other one is that we don't want to have a duplicate of just native. Okay, so we've just got one native, we're all good to go. Okay, so let's use R3 as a template for R1 and R2 then. So we'll copy R3 and we'll make R2.yaml and we'll copy R3 again and we'll make r1.yaml. Okay, so let's make our amendments to these files. If we go into r1.yaml, so we have everything within the correct structure, but obviously this is the details for r3. So let's just change this to 1.1.1.1, change this loopback to 1.1.1, and we'll also change this network here to 10.12.0.0, which is going to match this network here for r1. Okay, so let's make our amendments. So all the ones, change this to all the ones as well and we'll change this to 12. There we go, we've used our skeleton template to get us going. Let's go into R2. So R2, we'll change this to all the twos. We'll change this to all the twos. Now in this case, we actually still are advertising the 10.23.0.0 network, but we're also advertising the 10.12.0.0 network. You see R2 advertises this one, as well as this one, so we need to add this to. So really quite simple, we just follow the same template. We say IP, and what we're going to do is 10, 12, 0, 0. We'll add in the mask, which is going to be slash 24, and area is going to be area 0. And again, it's super easy because we have the exact template to follow. Okay, so let's just save this. So we've now got our three host variable files. So now what we're going to do is use this script. We're going to go into the run book. So simply put, the run book is going to pull out those host variable files. It's going to take it from the host var directory, and then it's going to take the device name for every single host. So that's going to be the r1.yaml file, which we just created. And then when it goes to r2, it's going to take the r2.yaml file. And then it's going to go to r3 and take the r3.yaml file. And it's going to take this YAML file and convert it into a valid XML payload. So we don't need to create any Jinja templates, any Jinja logic. All we need to do now is just manipulate the host files as we see fit and push the script. So we'll do python3 runbook.py and bam, there we are. We've pushed out our OSPF configuration. Let's go back to the device and we've now configured OSPF on router 3. Go on to R1, do show run section OSPF. And there's R2. We didn't need to create any Jinja template at all. Dimitri's script effectively builds everything from the host variable files. Okay, now here's the thing. Watch what happens here. And maybe we went into R1. And let's just add on an additional network. We'll say IP. And we'll just say 11, 11, 11, 11. With a mask of all the zeros. And we'll put this in area 51, of course. And what I'm going to do is actually delete the loopback. So R1 shouldn't have the loopback. So let's push this script and watch what happens. We arrow up and the loopback is still there. 
Now the reason for that is that all we're doing is pushing out additional configurations. If we want to implement desired state, we want to go back and use that operation replace. Now in the previous video, we actually specified that within our XML payload, within our Jinja template. This time, however, we're using no Jinja templates. We have to specify this within the YAML file. Now you'll remember the way we built our payload was by sending a request to native forward slash router. This is what the payload was based off and this is the key we want to actually do the replacement on. So let's go into the YAML file and make that amendment then. So cd host files and we'll go to vim r1. So next to the router key what we want to do is specify an operation of place. So if we do push enter and we go in one level push a space bar and what we want to do here is do an underscore and then specify operation replace. So our payload was based off native router. So we went to the router key went in one level and did an operation replace. This is where we're going to do this. And we'll do the same thing for R2. We want to have that be desired state as well. So new line space underscore operation replace. And R3 in one underscore operation replace. So Python 3 runbook.py push that out. Let's go back to R1 and we arrow up. And now the loopback has been removed. So just like the last time, let's say we wanted to add on NTP to this configuration. Let's follow the same process. So what I'll say is NTP server and I'll configure all the 99s and I'll make this one preferred. And I'll also configure another one saying NTP server with all the 77s. Now what I'm going to do is go back to my get script. Now if you don't know the path you can always start at native and then look for the keys. I happen to know just like last time that it's going to be forward slash native forward slash NTP. So let's pull this configuration then. Okay, so as of now, R2 and R3 do not have any NTP configured on them, so we don't see anything coming back. However, if we scroll up to R1, this is what we configured via the CLI. So what we want to do is copy from native to native and paste this in. Okay, now here's the thing, this is important. Because this is the second go around, within our host variable files, we already have this native key and we already have this native namespace. Now, as a matter of personal preference, I find the easiest way to maintain the correct indentation is just to copy the whole thing and then remove the duplicates. So this is the process I'm going to follow. Okay, so copy it all and we'll paste this into our host file. So let's go into CD host files, nano r1 and we'll go down and let's paste this in. Okay, so we now we have the correct indentation, but we also have this duplicate key of native and native, and we've got this native namespace as well as up here. This is why I suggested at the start to move this native up to the very top, just so it's always visible and out the road. So that means this other native, I can just delete it, and this other namespace, I can just delete it. But because I copied it this way, I don't need to change any of the indentation here. This is all going to be fine. Okay, so let's put this NTP configuration on R2 and R3 then. So let's go into R2, paste this in, and R3, paste this in, and let's just remove the duplicate natives. So we'll get rid of native and the native namespace, save you. And there we have it. So now if we push a configuration, we're going to push our OSPF configuration and we're also going to push out NTP for every single device. Let's rerun the script. And boom, there we have it. So now if we go to R2, we can do show run section NTP. Now we have our NTP configured, NTP configured on R3. And if we go to R1, do show run section NTP. We've got our NTP configured as well as our OSPF configuration. So now from this point on, all I'm going to be doing is managing all my state from these host variable files. So if I wanted to add in more NTP servers, I would just simply go and say on R1, I'm going to go in and add another IP address because I've got this skeleton template to work with and I'll add in all the 33s. So now R1 should have the additional 33s. Push that out, go to R1, arrow up. And now we have the 33s and that's all you need to do. So hopefully you found this video useful. And if you do, I would strongly encourage that you subscribe to Dimitri's YouTube channel and also follow him on Twitch where he does a lot of live streaming of network automation. And as per usual, if you want to see more content from me, you can find more of my network automation on CBT Nuggets, where I cover a lot more of this stuff in a lot more detail. So keep labbing, keep practicing. Thanks very much and I'll see you soon.